Let's just get right to the show, shall we do that? Please welcome to the stage Zach Zamboni and Chelsea Conaboy. Thank you all for being here, and thank you, especially Zach. I know you have a rather complicated schedule, so I appreciate you taking the time to, to talk with us here. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Thank you, Portland Press Herald. Thank you, Chelsea. Yeah. <laughs> hey, thank you. <laughs> Where are you exactly in the, the production calendar? I know season About 10 to is coming. About be crushed under the weight of yeah. world travel. Yeah. yeah. So yes, I, I, I've lost track of which season is on. I think it's 10. Yeah. It's hard for me because we're always six months ahead. So I, you know, we have always something in the in post. And I think it's season 11 we're about to go shoot. I can't so, so 10 is coming out in the fall. Yeah, there's something about to start, which we shot six months ago-ish. And we would then have you're... just stopped shooting the last season about a few months back. Yeah. So you'll see the tail end in the fall season of what I just stopped shooting. Wow. So. Um, when you say you're gonna, about to get crushed, crushed, what does that mean? How much are you on the, the road these days? Uh, a lot, yeah. yeah. Less than I used to be, but still a lot. Yeah. Uh, I used to do like 250 days uh, a year, wow. which is still not what Tony does. Yeah. I don't know what he does, but it's probably 320 or something. Wow. So I do less than that now, but wow. yeah, I can easily be out for two weeks in one part of the world, come home for three days, and be two weeks in another part of the world. It's amazing. Which is crossing the globe four times. A whiplash. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's intense. It's really intense. So I love in conversations like this one to sort of start at the beginning. <laughs> I, I really enjoy the process of seeing how people's lives become what they've become. Mm -hmm. How, um, tell us how you first got interested in filmmaking. And I've heard you answer this question very briefly and, and very long. I want the long version. You want the long version? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's all, you know, like beginning and ends of things is something I think about a lot. Yeah. And, and also the influences that created things, you know? In, the puzzle pieces. Yeah, because then I think it's just our line of work and what I have to do very quickly you're always analyzing the steps of what you just did, mm -hmm. and you're always trying to think 10 steps ahead. Mm -hmm. so, be, so being introspective and forward thinking is something you have to do you know, on yeah. a daily basis. And it always changes. You know? yeah. Perspective always changes. So I'd yeah. say today, looking back to Milo, growing up in the woods, very small town, um, being an hour from a movie theater, mm -hmm. you know, I had to go to Bangor to go to the movies. I wasn't allowed to watch much TV mm -hmm. at home. Uh, filmmaking was pretty far away from mm. you know, my list of jobs. Yeah. You know, my dad was a Navy pilot, and I think that was probably my, I went to the Blue Angels the other day with my son, who's 14 months. Uh, a little too young. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he saw the C-130 because I was really big. And I didn't think he saw the other ones. But, so I think probably my very first impression was to be a pilot. And then my mom was a school teacher, my dad pilot, and then homicide detective. So you got to think those are the two people on my shoulders. Yeah. So you've got, you know, that's a whole other thing. That's yeah, interesting. Right. Uh, Different conversations. Yeah, it's an interesting way of looking <laughs> at the world. So my mom was always heavy into art. You know, she always had me drawing and painting from as far back as I can remember. Mm -hmm. So really after, you know, the pilot thing wore off, which It'll come back later because it's, some of that stuff's really deeply buried. I'll come back to it. Mm -hmm. But art was, I wanted to be a painter. Mm -hmm. And I had an, art, uh, an uncle that was you know, always painting. He's an amazing painter. He's a wonderful artist. Um, and that's, that's, I had, that's what I thought I was going to do, paint. So I applied to art school, you know, painted all through high school. I uh, got time for college and applied to all the art schools. Um, from Savannah to, you know, everything. And at the last minute, I was like, no, you know, liberal arts. I don't even know why I said it, but I just said, no, liberal arts. I'm gonna, I, I want to do that. So I went to UMO and studied 
just the real liberal arts education. Mm -hmm. Everything from psychology to anthropology mm -hmm. to you know, statistics and math. Uh, it was great. It's wonderful. And there, I really, writing, came to love writing. Mm. And I was kind of happy that the, I wasn't painting anymore. And writing, I developed a deep love for that until my writing teacher told me I totally sucked. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, didn't, didn't do well in writing. Got the C's. And, um, but she said, look, hey, you're not going to be a great writer. But you've got a very visual style, so mm. maybe, you know, think about movies. Why don't you mm. think about writing screenplays? So I was like, huh, movies. So that was the first time the idea kind of formed that's, for you. That's the first time I remember. Yeah. It. And then, yeah, and then I started really, because nobody, I mean, nobody taught me how to watch movies. I yeah. liked movies as a kid. But that language, I, you know, it was yeah. a foreign thing to me. Yeah. You know, all my colleagues, or a lot of my colleagues from New York and L.A., these guys I work with now, you know, from the time they were, you know, stepping off the tricycle, they wanted to be Steven Spielberg, you yeah. know. But I just, I never had that. Yeah. Um, so a transition from writing into thinking about, oh, visual stuff. Oh, that kind of makes sense mm -hmm. with painting. Uh, and then I went to the workshops after Orono. Main media workshops. Yeah, main Did workshops it. where they had a, a very good one-year intensive cinematography program where I had some good teachers, and I really learned to be more than anything you know you can't teach somebody to shoot that fast it takes you know a decade mm. but i learned to be useful on a film set mm. and that was so key mm. so from learning to be useful uh i jumped right into new york jumped right into being on being a grip in an electric mm. which is like you know basic technicians uh on a film set and i got to do that Things move pretty fast for you at that point. Yeah, and then just you know, independent films and commercials and music videos. I just got right in the mix. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, my main roots. I grew up. You know, we had an old house, hundred-year-old house. Everybody had an old house. It was always breaking down. And you know, my dad was always making me help him fix it. Yeah. And building houses for my grandmother and stuff. I think you know, part of our roots. I'm sure we'll get into this later. But that craft was really in my blood anyway. So, well, we'll talk about that a little bit. I mean, how does that translate? It, the, the thing people think of, of, well, there's the creative process in filmmaking, but yeah. there's a lot of physical work also yeah, in what you do. Yeah, so, yeah, very much electrician, plumber, carpenter, you know, yeah. it's hands-on. It's, it's a, a trade that, you know, takes year, mentoring and years to sort of be able to say, I've done that a hundred times. You don't want to do it that way yeah. because of X, Y, Z, you right. know, but go ahead. And then you say, oh, I should listen to you. No. Yeah. But that craft of like, eh, bring those tools, because that's probably going to happen. That, that hands-on. And the ability more, even more than that, the ability, which I think is very much a main thing, to when things break and there's nobody around to tell you, <laughs> maybe your dad sometimes, but <laughs> when things break, you got to figure it out. Yeah. You know, if you grew up in the woods or, you know, I grew up on a street with houses and a town, but we had a camp. and. You know, figured it out. Stuff broke, and you figure it out. A valuable skill if you're on a set in Hollywood, but maybe doubly or triply or quadruply valuable if you're out in Myanmar or Burma, in yeah, absolutely, or yeah, somewhere wherever. unreachable where you often are. Yeah, and it's funny because I have a deep love for India, uh, Mexico, um, these places where Vietnam. Uh, where things, we've had things break. Things break mm -hmm. all the time. It's just, yeah, it comes true. with territory. But I love these places. We have a million stories about going, this breaks in half, or we need this special thing. Mm -hmm. You go down to a local welder, a local carpenter, and you, you get it built yeah. in a way that would take weeks here now. You know, in New York or in LA, if you needed this film part, it'd be like, oh man, we got to book the CNC yeah. guy and do the drawings and get the CAD out. And these guys are just like, mm, Mm -hmm. You know, and I love that. That's amazing. Oh, yeah, I just love that. Yeah. I remember, I mean, this is you know, Go for it. tangential. Yeah. But I remember one time in India, it's in one that we've done a couple shows there, but one time in India, uh, there's a cab scene in the Punjab show where up north, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Punjab, where, you know, Tony had this thing, he wanted an old taxi scene. Mm -hmm. He loved these ambassador taxis, and they're still around, so. Okay, cool, we'll do a little beat with that. And we were kind of mimicking, um, oh man, what's the name of the film? 
Indian train film with the. Uh, mm. oh, yes, Darjeeling Unlimited. We're kind of riffing on that a little bit. So, you know, anamorphic symmetry. Um, we got an ambassador, but we're always pressed for time. It's like, oh shit, you know, we got need one car. Mm -hmm. We need, you know, why don't we do this? We don't have time to rig all our cameras onto, yeah. you know. The second vehicle. Yeah, so, you know, you don't want to stop the car, make Tony wait around, move the cameras all around, da, 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 da. So we're like, okay, we'll get two. Okay, great. Can you do that? You know, wow, well, it's a hard car to find, so I don't know. No problem, got another one. Uh. Like, solve it right away. Okay, great. So two cars pull up. Oh, all right, well. Two uh, ambassador taxis. Two ambassador taxis, so, well. We'd like to put a camera here in the back, and then we'll put another one uh, in the passenger seat of the front car. Okay, great. Uh, well, problem is, we put the camera in the back, we can't see because of the window. Like, just where the angle wants to be, the glass is in the way. Oh, man. Now, if I was in New York, it'd be a big problem. I'd be like, well, what do you want to do? Mm. We can't, like, rip the car apart. Mm. In India, it's like, call the car glass guy. <laughs> call, the, call the, not just the car glass, but call the, ba the ba ta taxi backseat car glass guy. Okay, great. <laughs> Five seconds later, literally, it was minutes, minutes later, guy there shows up is. in his truck, rips all the glass out, uh -huh. put the camera in, no problem. Okay, great. It was like minutes. Second problem, well, the seat's a little, we can't quite get the camera we want. Call the seat guy. Okay, front seat guy comes in, rips the seats out, put the camera in. Oh, oh thanks no. so much. Get it, all, get it all ready to go. We're about ready to go. And Tom, the director's like, you know, all these other cabs that go around, they have these nice little decorations, these little, you know, little frilly things. And what would it take to, you know, <laughs> put get some, some frills of those? on this thing? You know, and you're like, oh, I gotta go out for a day, mm -hmm. go find the perfect stuff, mm -hmm. it's gonna be calling. And it was like, oh, you call the, you call the taxi decoration guy. <laughs> <laughs> sure enough, and I, not, I kid you not, it was like minutes. It was minutes. Wow. Truck rolls up, displays of all the taxi. <laughs> And it was, it, you know, a handful of guys came out and it was like, bang, 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 bang. Minutes solved. So I love, maybe it's the main thing, but I love, and it's, you know, in Mexico, just many times we've had like, oh, I can't put my steady cam on the tuk tuk. Mm -hmm. I need this to do it. No problem. Welder, just guy on the street, you know, right there with him, makes it happen That's in five amazing. minutes. Yeah, steel, welding, threaded bolts, bang. I love that. That's so I great. love that spirit yeah. around the world of like can do. Yeah. And I think that's a main thing of like, we can do that. Yeah. You know, we'll, we'll figure this out. We can do that. So much of a tangent. Right. But to come back to like. Well, I've heard you talk about how um, the importance of the crew that, mm. that Tony has surrounded himself with. And I imagine that can do spirit is part of it, right? That he wants people who can, can kind of go with it, solve those problems and, and, yeah. and keep going. But yeah. also there's more to it, right? There's, there's yeah, it's personality too. It's a can-do personality. <clears throat> Maybe you should just first tell us a little bit uh, briefly, you know, how, how did you f connect with him? You've been working with him for 10 years now, right? Yes, yeah, and more than that. It must be more than that. I don't even want to think about how long it's been. Yeah. I just turned 40, so it's been a while. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I came from another show they did. I'd been doing reality TV after I was a grip and electric. Terrible reality <laughs> shows, terrible. But it was in the 90s and it was a time, no, I guess that was 2000s, that was, that was 2000s by then. Um, you know, the Room Raiders and the Bravo shows, but it was the yeah. heyday of them, they just came right. out. And that time in history, it's funny, there's some very, very top camera people now that came, you know, that's... It's training came. grounds. Yeah. yeah. Um, terrible shows, yeah. but before that, it was very hard to, to get into being a cinematographer. It's really mm -hmm. hard. Very, there's, there's not many jobs, mm -hmm. you know? Now there's, now there's a lot of us. Mm -hmm. It's very competitive. But but, but that time, uh, just the reality world exploded and it mm -hmm. put cameras in a lot of people's hands that mm -hmm. couldn't have before. Mm -hmm. And now we're seeing that again with the internet, you know? Mm -hmm. like. A ten, one million fold now. Right, because the with, cameras are in their pockets. Yeah, and, and everything, you know, yeah. it's just, it, it's just been exponential. Yeah. But that, I, you know, I came from a world where I'm pre all that stuff, yeah. where it was like, it was very limited access. Yeah. So it's been amazing to see that. But change. you made your name in that and, and then 
Tony? Yeah, it taught, it taught me, you know, coming from that world, it taught me to be really fast on my feet. Mm -hmm. uh, but also coming from the film world to have mm -hmm. a good eye for stuff. And I would always be kind of a pain in the ass about like bridging those two things. Mm. Let's keep it looking good yeah. while still moving quickly and doing what we gotta do. Yeah. So I did a food show, among other things, uh, PBS, this nice organic, you know, mm. one of those early, very early, this is before all, you know, food became cool really in a way, mm. um, one of the first ones. And they liked my work on that, so they just mm. brought me in the office one day and said, you wanna work mm. with a board ain't show? And I was like, ooh. I never, I mean, I had never yeah. heard, never heard of them before. Yeah. And um, the one question was like, he's like, I got one question for you. I was like, okay. He said, do you like to drink? <laughs> and I, I, and I was like, I had no idea how to answer that, you know? Like, I didn't, I didn't know, I, I mean, I don't know yeah. how to answer that. So I was like, mm -hmm. yes, yeah, yes, but not too much, right. responsibly, <laughs> but I can enjoy myself. I would always drink with someone who wanted me to drink with them, but I wouldn't drink too much. Covered all your bases. To not be able to do my job. <laughs> you know, so it's, it's, yeah, so it's good. And then from that, I mean, the rest is really just like history. <clears throat> I remember Tony said to me on my first job, he was like, he was just like, he just came over and he doesn't ever do this, but he just stood over my shoulder and he was watching what I was shooting. He was like, I like the cut of his jib. <laughs> I'm like, who says that? <laughs> I'm like, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, There's some, been some other endearing moments, but. I'm sure there are many, yeah, right? Oh, I mean, yeah. 10 years, and, and, and lots of people have been hi hired and fired in that time, but you've, you've, yeah. you've been able to stay with him. And yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't know how. I think it's, it's just it's being able to balance those things. Yeah. Um, it's hard. It's a hard job. It's it's very much a, a chess game. Yeah. Every day, and the board, and somebody like goes like that with the board, you know, all the time. Mm. You're like, oh, I'm six moves in. This mm. is gonna be good. Yeah. Going right where I want to go. Oh, sorry. Yeah. You know, start all over. It's it's like that. It's funny. It'd be like, you know, an electrician or a carpenter or a plumber here. Really good. Okay, now go over to India. You know, oh, yeah. let's figure this out. Like, wait a second. Yeah. This is the breaker box? Like, what? You gotta take the wire, what? Through this house to get to that? Yeah. Um, can you talk a little bit about that creative process? You mentioned the Punjab episode and um, the film that you were referencing there. You guys yes. do that a lot. And, yes. and and you've really, it's been, well, I'll let you take it. it it's, it's fascinating that it's not, yeah. it's not just about ha filming you go ahead. I don't want to take it from you. I mean, it's, you. Uh, I guess the film side of it comes from, we're all, everyone on the crew is a filmmaker in the sense that they, they were trained and came up through the film world, yeah. movies, and, um, and trying to make things cinematic, whatever that very ethereal term means now. Yeah. Um, and he, Tony is a, an absolute, um, a shocking, he has a shocking catalog of films in his head. Mm -hmm. It's really, he's got a photographic memory, um, and he, he knows a hundred times more films than I do. Mm -hmm. uh, I think his dad got him into films when he was young, and he just, but he remembers all the directors and the cinematographers and the mm -hmm. actors from just, just thousands of films. Mm -hmm. And he'll, he'll just start talking at breakfast about, you know, you really gotta see Obscure Film X. You know, you need to watch that and I'll write it down. <laughs> and I'll go and watch it. And he's right, you know. But he's, he's got this amazing catalog of films and he's a writer. Uh, and I think the two things together, it's his way of making this an essay. You know, mm. this show is an essay. Mm. It's, uh, we're not journalists. <clears throat> we might be on a journalistic network. We try to have journalistic integrity in a way, but we're very much like, hey, it's a personal essay. Mm. This is not the way it is. It's the way he thinks about it and the way we see it, mm. which is a you know uh, a truth. It's a story truth, yeah. uh, but it's maybe not a true true, right? Like the grades of true, maybe this is more true than true. What yeah. we're trying to do, you know, by just saying, hey, this is the way we saw it, yeah. uh, versus like, you know, you'll never make wherever we go. Somebody's always unhappy because we missed something or we didn't quite say it the way right way, or, you know. But it's, I feel like it's almost more true than true to be able to do this essay 
uh, about the world. Do you always know what perspective a particular episode is going to take? Do you always know what the essay will say um, when you start the filming? No, or? and I think that's where film comes is, is they're like jumping off points. Yeah. Because, you know, we're going these places. Some, some we've been, we've been a lot of places now, and we go back to places we've been. Yeah. Um, so that helps, but we're always trying to do two things, which is uh, imagine an approach that will be appropriate for that thing which we have not done yet. You know, so you're trying to tell the story in an appropriate way. Mm -hmm. Every place is different. Every story should be told differently. But you also don't quite know what you're going to encounter yet. Mm -hmm. So we watch films. Hey, Rome. Well, you know, what's Tony think? Oh, he likes these movies. He wants to talk about it in this way. Oh, Myanmar. He's watched these films. He's read these things, or he's just listening to this music. Hmm. Uh, this is the kind of the, we're starting to build a tone and a flavor. So you sort of have to get inside his head, also. Yes, okay. but it's like it's a very strange process because it's it changes. You know, you have preconceived notions, and the more you stick to those, the harder your time you're going to have. Yeah. You know, because things change. Yeah. It all changes. But on the other hand, you know, for me, I'm always trying to make rules. I need to make rules of the games. Otherwise, it's chaos. And it's a game. Yeah. So we're making these rules a language. Film is a language. Cinema is a language. So we're trying to approach each show with kind of a different language. Hmm. You throw that into this blender, it's real chaos. You know, We're very good at our jobs, and we're very organized. And there's probably not many people who could do it better. <coughs> but it still somehow always becomes complete chaos hmm. on the ground. Hmm. So you deal with the jet lag and the wait we were supposed to wait. I thought that you guys are supposed to be here then. and the fish was supposed to arrive. No, we don't have fish this time of year. Or the, yeah. the boat, no, there's no boats. There's no lake. It's dry. You know, whatever. <laughs> it's, you know, whatever it is. And, and the ability to like, OK, well, you know, the whole Jaws reference isn't going to work there now that there's no boats. So <laughs> let's, you know, rethink this. Or, you know, you go out and you're like, you know, Tony, we shot this whole sequence that perfectly mimics, even though we don't really perfectly mimic, but we, did this whole thing about that movie you said, yeah, but it's not really working anymore. Mm. You know, you get home and it's like, yeah, well, I don't know, it didn't really work. Wow. But it's, you know, because his frame of re reference changed. Yeah. So it's, it's so this uh, really, uh, it's this, it's dynamic. It's truly dynamic. It's like a chemistry experiment. And you're just watching this thing grow. Yeah. And it's to try to, you control it too much, it dies. And if you don't control it enough, enough you're not going to come home with the show. And there's another kind of combustible element here also, yes. which is danger in many of the places that you've been. Absolutely. Um, what, I, I, I'm thinking in particular of the story I've heard you tell about the favelas. The, the walkabout in, in a favela. And, yeah, and, I mean. Or, or is there another you'd like to tell just about, you know, the, the fact that you have all of these variables and then you're actually dealing with the, the politics and, and yeah. the people on the ground and you're stepping into things that, into places that they don't expect you to be. And, yeah, and I would stuff. say that, you know, I am a superstitious person. We all are on the show. But um, my overwhelming experience in the world, overwhelming far, far overwhelming, has been the universality of people and compassion. Mm. I've always been treated well. Mm. People, no matter where you go in the world, it's been constantly reaffirmed to me that we have all, mm. we all have basically the same hopes and desires. Mm. You know, we all want to take care of our kids. We yeah. all want to eat good food. Yeah. We all want to be, you know, a comfortable place to stay. Yeah. And that's always been reaffirmed yeah. to me. That said, we've definitely been some really dangerous places, yeah. really dangerous places. And one thing we always, and we have to do, you know, hostile environment training and, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, go through practice carjackings and all that stuff, mm -hmm. which is very unnerving. But we always say to ourselves, the most dangerous place you can go is us driving to work, mm -hmm. which is true. Yeah, that's how sure. you kind of like Horace. find some sanity. You know, right. it's really the craziest stuff I've done from where it is to hanging out of helicopters to some places I've gone is like, still riding around the car is more dangerous. Yeah. At least that's what, right. that's what we tell ourselves. Yeah. But I don't like to weigh, I don't know. It's like my dad is a homicide detective. Mm. He was a homicide detective up, up north for many years in Orono. And you could see that he's, how can his 
vision of the world not be shaped. Sure. You know? So I try not to let my vision mm. of the world be shaped by some of the tough yeah. situations I've been in. Yeah. When so many have been, man, just taken such good care of yeah. by people with nothing. Yeah. Nothing. And they'll give you everything. Mm. Anything. You know? I mean, that's, that's, that's the experience that I want to maintain. But dangerous, I mean, yeah, like, uh, you've got to know who you're dealing with. Mm. Danger, danger is about not knowing who you're dealing with mm. and not having a good relationship with that person. Mm. That's what's dangerous. So one thing we've always been good about is having a rapport with whoever that is, yeah. whatever they've done. Yeah. We're here to tell the story and we're gonna, have a, we're gonna make sure we talk to the right people mm. and everybody knows we're not police. Mm. We're not here to, you know, we're here to talk honestly with you and have an honest conversation. Mm. So whether it's, you know, cartels or, or, you know, gangs or militias or, you know, it's, it's all about communication mm. and not being, the worst thing you can do is find yourself in that place, in that moment where you weren't supposed to be there mm. and you know it right away. And that's a terrible, terrible feeling. Yeah. Is when you catch yourself on that street corner and you say, wait a second. It's, it's like a feeling, yeah. you know? You just say, ah, yeah. I wasn't supposed to be here. You know? And that's, that can happen anywhere. Sure. And that's what people, you know, they don't think like, oh man, Mosul, you know, that must have been tough. Well, yeah, but, you know, so is, there's neighborhoods here in the U.S. Yeah. You have to be really careful and know what you're doing and mm -hmm. know who you're talking to. Mm -hmm. You know, so danger can sneak up in, on you in the most, you yeah. know, unsuspecting places. Yeah. And like that favela, you know, story, I was in the favelas, really dangerous neighborhoods, but we went in with the, you know, the chief, yeah. the boss, the local top person yeah. uh, who knew everybody. And, and that incredibly dangerous place was like, no, these guys are cool. They're not here to, you know, they're mm -hmm. cool. Mm -hmm. Leave them alone. So I was walking backwards through, and I'm shooting uh, somebody walking backwards. I'm backtracking, as we call it, like this. So I can't see behind me. Pulling back. And these favelas, they're built on hillsides, and they're really, you know, it's like a maze. They're really curvy, curvy, curvy. And um, low, you know, low roofs, and then, and then it's open, and then it's to little tunnels and then you walk into things. So I'm just, you know, I'm just blind and my AC is probably just pulling me. So I walk back and all of a sudden I see all these guns like pop into my frame and I start slowing down <laughs> and I realize that I've just backpedaled, back as we say, backtracked through the SWAT team about to kick this door in a drug raid. And, and but they were just as surprised as I was. Because I just came around this corner, you know? And in my frame are all these guys and they're just like <laughs> frozen, you know, guns ready. And I was like <laughs> keep walking. And they were like <laughs> so I just kept slowly walking around. You know? um, yeah. To to your point about compassion and and yeah. um how that's the overwhelming sentiment. Um, Tony has been, sounds like I'm a different track, but Tony has been very outspoken, politically critical yes. of, of Trump and critical of the div divisive nature of American discourse. Really, no one has kind of evaded his criticism in mm -hmm. that. And um, uh, But he talks a lot, he, he, he's talked about how the most essential thing that's necessary right now is for more of us to break bread together. Um, and I'm curious about whether that, uh, obviously that's at, part, uh, at the heart of the show, mm. but has that developed a more urgency, a, mm. a sense of urgency in the past year? I mean, is that part more part of your conversation? These yeah, days? it's interesting because we've spent so many years going around the world to hot political situations, you know? where there's two sides of the story and both sides are really angry about something. And we've tried to bring those two sides to a table and eat about it and talk about it. And if we can't bring those two sides, then at least go have dinner with that side and mm -hmm. go have dinner with that side and at least feature both of them in the show. Mm -hmm. you know? But we've made a real attempt 
in all these other places yeah. to like, you know, try to understand what these, what you side is saying. Mm -hmm. And now, yeah, it's, it's amazing to see just how the world's changed. Mm -hmm. um, it's changed a lot mm -hmm. in, uh, in the last decade. The feelings out there mm -hmm. have changed. And I would say that's probably what Tony's alluding to is this, this thing that we do out there, mm -hmm. it's time to do it here, mm -hmm. you know? And I, I think you'll see that mm -hmm. for sure. You know, he's very good at it, yeah. you know, and we've, we've been very good at it. He's really uh, good at it. Just this ability to, you know, we're just talking. Yeah. And, and food has really been the secret weapon mm -hmm. that we've had for a long time of the ability to get you to the table. Mm -hmm. You know, people are like, oh, it's a food show. It's mm -hmm. like, kind of, you know. Right, yeah. <laughs> you know, not really. Not really. Yeah. It's amazing. But it's amazing what, and being with CNN and being a food show, yeah. a food show, we get act. We're here to see your food and your culture. Right, right. The uh, the access that's given yeah. us, of just the diffusing door. thing. Yeah. You know, it's just just diffusing stuff enough to say, well, let's talk. You know. I'm amazed when I. You can tell when he's when someone has said something he doesn't like or, or mm -hmm. he doesn't like someone, but the food sort of helps the conversation just keep yeah. going and he sort of talks in a way that he lets us know, I think, that, how he feels, but doesn't necessarily offend someone. I think that's, it's, he's very skilled at yeah. navigating that. Story. Yeah, and I think that's, I don't know, <clears throat> something I learned from like my mom and my grandma. It's like mother-grandmother learning, you know? Yeah. Where you're just like, how to be civilized yeah. and polite and yeah. mannered and like, you know, yeah. be a good uh, guest. Right. And those are things that I think he would never, he'd never say to you, but we all have to have. Yeah. And that's, that's you, you have to have that yeah. to be on that crew. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I think about my grandmother when I think about that, mm -hmm. and my mom, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's part of, that's part compassion, but it's also maybe a New England, maybe a main like, mm -hmm. you know, a politeness mm -hmm. and a civility of just, and a listening, you know. Yeah. And those are really important qualities for that show. That like, for all of you're in somebody's us. house. Yeah. You know, you're. Yeah. This is somebody's house. They're inviting you in as a guest. Yeah. It's not, and that's something mm -hmm. he certainly embodies. Is like, we're not making a TV show. Yeah, you're here as somebody's guest. You know, and if you don't behave yourself, you're fired. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you make you, know, you make us look bad. You're fired. Right? Yeah. Whether it's not having a shot with the local farmers yeah. of their, you know, local homebrew that right. smells like diesel. Or it's, you know, whatever the local custom is. Yeah. But, you know, it's that's, that sense of participation or, or, or eating that thing that you would not normally eat, right. but they love, right. you know? That's part of being a good guest, yeah. you know? Um, this, my next question takes us in a different direction, but I want to make sure we get to it, which is to talk a little bit about open space and um, you wrote in the Wall or I guess you were interviewed in the Wall Street Journal last year mm -hmm. about your how important uh, walking in the woods here or in Spain where you where you live part time mm -hmm. also is to your creative process and maybe to your sanity you know to, mm -hmm. to keeping you grounded um, what have you learned about uh, I, I, you've traveled so much into places that are so dense and, and well to all kinds of places, mm. but why? Um, what have you learned about that? I guess you know what have what what? Um, mm. How has has that kind of space informed? How has your travels informed your the what you value about about that time spent in the in the wilderness? I spent so much time in the woods as a kid in 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 Maine and Milo, a lot of time. Yeah. That's where we played. <clears throat> that was the playground. You know, it was woods. In fact, when I moved to New York, it was really hard for me. Mm. It was really hard. I spent, I don't know, 10, 11, 12 years in New York. Mm. And it was, those early years were, they were not easy. Mm. It was, that was me, that was not my environment, mm. you know? And it was a tough adjustment. And spending mm. my formative years in that, with this, you know, I didn't realize it at the time, but this sense, this, it's an emotional, it's a, a psychic space of, mm. ah, this woods just goes on. And never mm. feeling a, an ending to the forest. Mm. That the forest had like a, 
that stopped at a fence or a parking lot or housing development a housing development or condominiums yeah. like i didn't have that sense up north i just took it for granted that this the the the, the woods just yeah. you know it's like the amazon or something like i grew up in a canopy i'm not a desert or a sea guy i love to yeah. sail i have a boat here but i'm like it's very foreign to me yeah. but that that emotion and that psychology and that kind of state of mind I think is critical to humanity. Hmm. It's critical to us as humans. Hmm. And I mean, there's been scientific studies on it. Um, and I think we're slowly learning that we, we need, it's not a, I, it's not a forest management <clears throat> issue is what I'm talking about. It's beyond who owns the parks. Hmm. It's beyond uh, the politics. Hmm. It's, we just have to figure out how we're gonna spend more time in the woods. Hmm. Because, I mean, the desert is a similar situation, and so is being on the ocean. Sure. But I think people know what I'm talking about when I say this feeling of being mm. in nature, you mm. know? And that feeling is critical to keeping us sane. Mm. It's totally critical. Mm. And that's what I've learned in going to all these other places that are not Maine. I still, honestly, Maine is still my favorite place to be. Mm. It really is, I'm not kidding. Mm. It, I think it's the most, mostly in summer. I love winter too. <laughs> I love winter here. I love the snowmobile, ice fish. Yeah. You know, I love snow. Yeah. Just like after March, yeah, right. and April, yeah, right. <laughs> May, May. <laughs> Maybe it's nice to be in Spain during that time. Right. But that this is a very beautiful place. It's and, and it's has an, but there's a feeling to it, a smell to the state uh, mm. in the air mm. that we all know. It would kill me to lose that. You know, mm. we can't lose that. Mm. So, what I see you, is you've seen it lost. Elsewhere. I've seen it I mean, lost, and it doesn't. It can't come back. Yeah. Unless there's Chernobyl or something. You mm. know what I mean? What has to happen once you develop? Once you put down roads, and and I, you know, I really want to take it outside of politics, uh, just for sure. argument's sake, and just say, you know, once you put down, once you develop that. How can it come back? Yeah. I mean, if I bought a part of that development and put yeah. my house there, I gotta give you my house back, yeah. turn it into open forest, right. you know? Um, so it's, it's, it's really something to think about. Mm. And it's really, um, we've gotta have, we've gotta put a value, I think, on, on, on forest, on, on spaces that are undeveloped. We need to have a, we need to see that as a valuable thing, mm -hmm. I, I think, you know, as yeah. like, you know, it's just, we're just, it's, it's got a lot, of, you know, yeah. it's good for us like this. Yeah. We can do other things over here. It's not about that it can't be forested and managed. That's not, that's not what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. I think people know, especially from Maine, what I'm talking about. When I just yeah. say, like, we just have, we have to go be in the woods and feel like we're outside of civilization and society for a while. Mm -hmm. What happens if we lose that feeling? Mm -hmm. You know, the Allagash and... You know, what happens if we can't get lost a mm. bit mm. And, and can't get to a place where we don't see any development mm. and we feel like maybe we really are put mm. in a situation where we have to kind of survive on our own mm. and figure it out. You know, what happens when we lose those skills and what happens when we lose those, those feelings? I, it, to me, it's really perilous. Perilous, I don't want to a paranoid take on it, although I'm really afraid of it. I would like the positive take, which is we have this really, really beautiful and very precious resource here in the state. Mm -hmm. it's, it's precious what we have. Yeah. And most of us are down here. Yeah. You know, I don't go up there much. I don't see it much. Yeah. You know, so I, hey, I can't, you know, I'd be the first one to be like, well, you're not up there. You're down here. Yeah. yeah. So, but, you know, it's, it's incredible what we have. Yeah. And there's just going to be less and less of it. Yeah. I think we should. Take some questions. Yeah. Who's, who's the gonna, mic? The mic is a here. Oh, okay, well, yes. Yeah, Hello, in, in the dark. Yeah. A lot of the shows have amazing moments. Sometimes there are a few seconds. Sometimes more seconds that are pretty strictly visually driven, mm -hmm. and there may be no Tony 
voiceover, there may be no Tony on the camera, mm -hmm. but they're magic and they're great and they're really powerful, amazing, delightful part of the show. Thank you. So I wonder sort of what the process of that, are you involved in that? You and an editor, mm. you and some scripting, does Tony sort of, I mean, where do those come from? They're amazing. Sure. Um, yeah, moments, I mean, I assume everybody can hear the question, right? So uh, moments, uh, again, it's a little, it's complicated in the sense of there's moments for Tony, there's moments that appear, there's moments that I go and have. One thing I'm very good at is just kind of wandering around. I like to just wander around with the camera, translator, maybe an assistant, you know, or just, just me sometimes, um, and find stuff. And I have a way, that's my interaction with people. Not just the local people, but people. Uh, even if we don't speak the same language, you know. And I, I really make it a point to never film people without permission. So part of moments for me is finding out a, a rapport, even if it's an unspoken one. Can I come into your life and spend a little time with you? And I think that's part of what you feel is somebody letting into their, in, in, you into their lives for a moment um, in a way that we don't much anymore, you know? And I think that's, I mean, you could write a book on, on what those moments are. It's, it's a very interesting thing. For me, me to have a moment, there's a camera, me to have a moment with you, it's somehow being translated through this glass onto this card, which goes back to New York, which gets loaded in an edit system. Does the editor have a moment with it? Does maybe the editor see, experience a moment that I didn't see, which happens sometimes? That moment gets shown to Tony. Maybe Tony doesn't have a moment when he hates it. Uh, or maybe Tony has a moment with it, and then he writes to it. There's another moment. And then paired with that chain, it comes to you. And I think that's a really profound thing. It's a very strange thing. It's inexplicable, I love it. But I think it's very weird, you know? <laughs> it's a weird and, a weird and wonderful thing. Um, but those moments, yeah, there's different approaches to how they're found. Sometimes, literally, it's something I didn't see but the editor did. Or, or, or sometimes it's Tony saying, you've gotta shoot this. Me saying at breakfast like, Look, we're about to leave. What am I missing? You're missing this. Oh, okay. Or he's, you know, on the way to work. Did you see that? No. You got to go see this. Or he's not with us. He's walking home or he's alone. Sees something. He has his moment. Then I need to go find his moment. Not re really recreate it, but, you know, did you see this elephant that comes and eats this thing every day? It's crazy. Okay, I'm going to go see that. So, Weird, it's a weird thing, mm -hmm. these moments. And they're, they're all unique and they all come about in different ways. Um, yeah, I love it. I, maybe that's a non-answer, I don't know. <laughs> but I don't edit. Uh, there's great editors, I don't. Uh, there's a director, we do prep. Director preps is a producer, does more logistics, some creative, um, certainly a bunch of creative. Uh, we go out in the field, we do these things. I'm not in the edit, I can see rough cuts and cuts. Uh, sometimes they want my opinion on those. Do you get veto power ever? Um, no, technically no. But I can make a try. About it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can make. Yeah, I can be like why? You know, and I'm respected. Yeah, of course. To, you know, man, did you see that? Why isn't that not in there? Yeah. Oh well, you know, and an editor might have a great yeah. reason. I mean, I think you know we've I've talked about this several times. It's like it's that's the difference with painting or being a novelist. You know without an editor is yeah. it's you get to say what you want to say. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're totally wrong and it sucks. But you you know, yeah. there you published it. Yeah. You know, or this hey, this is the way I'm gonna paint this. Yeah. It's not like that for right, me in right. TV. It's uh, it's edited. There's mm -hmm. a, there's another voice. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I agree, sometimes I don't. But that's their job and they're they're better at it. It's a weird thing too. I'm all the way back here. Okay. Uh, what's the size of your crew? Mm -hmm. How much uh, gear do you take? And how long are you at a location? Oof. Uh, yeah, it's uh, very, very fluid, as they say, uh, in the business. It's a fluid situation. It's not, it really changes. Um, and people think I'd be evasive about things. 
but I'm really not. It's, uh, it really changes. Like we just did a show in Puglia uh, with Panavision. We had so much uh, wonderful equipment, dollies and uh, 12 to 1 lenses, 11 to 1 Panavisions, you know, our zooms are this big and mm -hmm. the tripods are massive and the camera weighs 60 pounds and um, lighting and uh, crew, huge crew, massive. I don't know how many people, but you see the crew pictures. And it's a big crew, a lot of people. Um, so when we're doing a particular style, we might have a giant crew and a lot of equipment. Um, that was a lot. That was like 30 cases worth of stuff. And we picked up a whole lot more in country. So that's a lot. Uh, on the other hand, the next week after that, or was it the week before? Wow, well, I can't even believe it. <laughs> I think it was, see, I can't even remember. It's Sri Lanka. I did them back to back, Sri Lanka and, and Italy. I can't talk too much about them because they're not out. But I will say that that I did with a tiny, tiny camera. And pretty much the whole show is on one lens. Wow. So I went back to back around the world four times and did two shows in a manner that could not be more different. Mm. That's telling the story differently. That's a, that's a very small crew, you know. You don't need much for that. But a camera this size, like this, with a monitor that I have to put here because this monitor is terrible, um, and shoot really, 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 really dynamic and incredible stuff in Sri Lanka with one basically one 18 millimeter fixed focal length, which is just like it's not a zoom. You can't ch you know you can't go. Whoop, whoop. It's one lens, it's like this, this big, and just do basically an hour-long show like that. Was that a decision that was made for style or for ease of portability or no, both? No, we don't. What? Unfortunately, we don't usually do things for ease, you know. Uh, <laughs> I don't. I get, you know, and I've heard it. I've, <laughs> I've paid for it. I heard it. Um, yeah, we don't take the easy road. We try to take the right road. Yeah. And if we're lucky, that right road sometimes is the easy road. Yeah. But we just make it a point. It's like, that's not what drives the decision making. It isn't, it's never easy. We know it's hard. So that's about like, we were talking earlier, like what's the language of this? What's the language of the films and the references? Tone, what's the editorial pace? What's the camera to subject relationship? Because on a zoom, you know, we can be way over there and like this. But if I'm in a wide lens and I want this, I have to be like this. Yeah. So you imagine the difference between those two shows. Yeah. Like one show, camera, camera, mm -hmm. the camera can be in the shadows. It's way over there. And the different dynamic. And again, you know, this is the weird soup of multi-level stuff. But the difference between that and then coming up in here. And I've shot plenty of things in my life with a camera like this. Yeah. And that's, that gets into personality and all kinds of weird stuff of like, well, how do you, how do you, and then for somebody at the end of the, the scene to be like, wow, I forgot you guys were there. Huh. And you're like right here. And I can't tell you how many hundreds of times people around yeah. the world have said like, oh, I forgot the camera's here. That's amazing. So. I'm all the way here on your changes. left. It changes, it changes, it changes. On your left, over here. Ah. Hi. Um, first of all, I just wanted to tell you that I love the show, and um, I think the compassion that you're referring to really comes through yeah. on every episode, and that's my favorite part. I just wanted to tell you that. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Try but what, <laughs> what I wanted to ask you about is the time you brought Tony to Maine, mm -hmm. and I really like to know if he, how he felt about Maine, and if you could just talk a little bit about that, I bringing think... him here. Yeah, I mean, it's, I think he probably did it because it was a good chance to rib me about stuff. <laughs> you know, I think that was probably his driving dynamic, <laughs> is uh, getting dirt on me and being able to nudge me. And also liking to put me in the hot seat, you know, that, so that I understand, which I do, what he goes through. You know, it's hard. What he does is hard. And being on camera is hard. It's like, I mean, hey, shooting's pretty hard. But... <laughs> It's, it's hard, it's a real, it's a profession and it's a talent to do that, what he does every day. Um, and I, uh, it's, for me it was like always shooting in New York. I mean, the hardest job is shooting your hometown. It's the hardest one. It's the one you avoid the most. It's the worst. Uh, Cause you'll never get it right. 
You know, just like in any other country, we'll never get it right. And you have to live with the people who might be unhappy. <laughs> That's right. And I have. And I, I've, I've paid for that. So, um, yeah, it's like one of the only times Tony's ever been negative in history huh. was here. <laughs> He's not a negative guy. But we've all made amends. So, yeah, that was very high pressure um, because I wanted to get it right, you know. But you also, like... It's like art in the sense that you can't you can't overthink it, you know. Mm -hmm. And Tony, I guess, is in, he's been he's a very hard guy to work for in that way, mm -hmm. that he won't let afford you the time to do that, mm -hmm. which is good. Like you, I could very much overthink a show in Maine, you know. Mm -hmm. I'd want it to be perfect, mm -hmm. and just having him sort of push, 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 go, 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 mm -hmm. allowed me to just shoot from the hip a little more. Mm -hmm. Maybe that maybe even more, you know, yeah. just kind of yeah. said the way it really was, you know. Um, but yeah, it was hard, you know. It's so much easier to tell somebody else's story. It's really hard to tell your own story, you know, because you want, you want to do right by your people. And I do try to do right by other people. I really do. Um, but it's hard to do right by your yeah. people, you know. Because you will. You never, that goes back to the essay thing, right, of like, you just got to say this is the way I feel about it. You can you can't say this is the way it is because you'll it's you'll never get it. It's too many perspectives. Thanks, Stephanie. Is another one there? Uh, thank you for being here. Um, I like the way that you capture his uh, sarcasm, his wit, and his honesty, mm -hmm. and the way it comes across. Similarly to the way I like the the way that the uh, cinematographer did uh, Mike Rowe mm -hmm. for his series mm -hmm. on um, on his dirty jobs mm -hmm. or whatever it was. Is he uh, two parts to this? Is he always got that character and personality, uh, or does it sort of dry down? And then the other part is, how in God's name does he eat and drink that much in the course of a day? Yeah, part one of the question. Yeah, he is. I mean, that's part of what makes him great is that he he really is. He is. That's that's who he is. You know, um, there's no on camera, off camera. He, you know. If anything, when he's off camera, he's, he's a very shy guy. So maybe that's, maybe that's, that's what's different. Yeah, he's very shy, very shy person. Um, maybe shy is not the right word. Yeah, shy, you know, shy. He's, he's, not, the, he's not the center of the party, he's really not. Um, and, but yeah, he's that tough, he's that acidic. Uh, you, you, you gotta always put it in context. He is 25 years in the kitchen, running kitchens. And he runs us like the kitchen, you know. But like the kitchen, it's a harsh environment, you know? People are always quitting, people are always coming and going. If you're not tough enough, you can't tough it out, and you just drop out. So there's very much a culture of like pushing you to your limits so that, hey, that's how you find the best. It seems know? like he doesn't have the cruelness, though, that I think can sometimes come He's with that, cruel. right? He doesn't seem like he No, not is cruel, ever but he can be, you know. Tough. Yeah, tough. Yeah. Tough. Uh, mad. You can get bad. You can get very mad. Um, but it comes from the right place, yeah. which is keep, he's no bullshit, he does not like to bullshit. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's why we get along. That's the main thing, right? Just like, mm -hmm. we really have this BS detector, mm -hmm. right? Of just like, we have a very low tolerance of it here, I guess, culturally. And he has that too. He's just like, nah, you know, he's just gonna say what he thinks and say how he feels. But, it, but he still has the grandma compassion of like, he's not gonna insult people. You know, he's, he's gonna be a good guest for the, the part. Part two was about eating and drinking. Do you have to keep up with that? Yeah, I don't know how he does it. It's really hard. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how he does it. I mean, he does, I mean, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, that, he does a really intense, uh, he does that really intensely. So that helps. But he'll, I mean, he'll eat and drink all that and then get up at six and five in the morning and go do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I don't know. I don't know. I, he's a mystery. And even traveling as much as he does, and he's a mystery. He really is to me. Can we do one more question? Oh, sorry. Yeah. To interrupt you. I'm um, all the way back here. See me? Uh, yes. Well, that was a perfect segue for my question. <laughs> so uh, in your travels, what have you eaten that you hope to never eat again? <laughs> I figured yeah. somebody would ask that question. Yeah, it's a it. classic. Yeah. Um, no, people want to know. It's interesting. Yeah. I'd say the thing that I couldn't eat was a mentholated cockroach. 
Yeah, it was a cockroach. It was like, it was like cured in some, it smelled like mouthwash, <laughs> like scope. <laughs> and it was, so it was a giant dead cockroach that was really, really minty. <laughs> and he ate it. I couldn't. I dribble on you. Yeah. So, but, but I've eaten plenty of bugs that I would not eat again. The crunchy, crunchy is fine. Like Mexico, lots of bugs. Crickets and grasshoppers. and They're crunchy and spicy. It's when they're meaty yeah. that you know. <laughs> uh, ant larva mm. in an omelet's okay. Alone. <laughs> Worms can't, I don't really. It's not that I can't do it, because I've eaten like rotten birds and stuff. Really just rotten. Rot, like it's if you hit a pigeon on the side of the road and left it out for weeks, it's like rotten. But rotten bird is somebody else's like delicacy, and probably science will find out that we should all be eating rotten birds. You know? So maybe we shouldn't make fun. But rotten things, yeah, rotten things. Uh, we, we in the West don't like slimy. You know, in China they tend to slimy's good and delicious. I eat slimy's hard. Brains, I don't. You know, I won't order brains on my own. Eyeballs. I won't order. Yeah. And even like even even organ meats, I just I don't love them. Yeah. That minerally. But one thing I have learned that's very clear. There's a very lot of clear, tripe on the show. A lot of what? Tripe. Yeah, tripe's tripe's not bad if it's really yeah. fresh and I don't like. It's got to have some texture to it. Yeah. Like the Italians do it, and and not big pieces. Mm. Big, just like a big oyster. I love oysters, <laughs> but like the big Japanese ones, like yeah. that's a lot of yeah. oyster. <laughs> you know, but. Um, yeah, it's, it's taught me that, you know, taste is a cultural thing. We're, t we're definitely taught what's good and not, mm -hmm. uh, in a way. And beyond that, we all have different palates, mm -hmm. you know? Like, you know, you can argue with your wife about, like, that's good and that's not good. Well, no, she has a different palate. Mm -hmm. Like, we all have different, and I think there's various sets of them, but, you know, some of us don't like vinegar and acid. Yeah. Some of us love salt. So, you know, there's just like, we are, we're individuals. So, also I've learned to not fault people for like not liking the fishy thing. You know, maybe, I don't know what fish tastes like. Maybe it tastes like cilantro to you. And yeah. to you it's soap and me it's cilantro. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. there's all this grayness of there's personality, there's person, there's individual yeah. biology, and then there's culture yeah. of like, no, slimy is great. Yeah. No, slimy is <laughs> rotten. You no. Know, so, so, yeah, I've eaten a lot. I wouldn't eat again but yeah. well Zach thank you so much for this thank I you. suspect he'll thank you Chelsea yeah good interview it's been a pleasure